and we're going. We're back Friday. Friday morning. Weekend is here. Tremendous time to be a sports fan. I was saying in the intro, tremendous time to be a, a sports better. The, the energy is high when you're sitting on the couch with your buddies and you got some money on the game and you're looking to win a little money. Um, but no, tremendous time to, to be in the sports and entertainment industry, especially after a two-year hiatus with uh, tournaments not going on. We just finished our t- first uh, our first tournament over there in beautiful Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia, uh, the Joe Lamontang March Break uh, Tournament. It was the 39th annual. It should have been the 41st, but since uh, it, uh, it didn't happen for the past two years, it was the 39th, and we were... Uh, tremendously excited to be a part of it i think we went in maybe a little well it's just it's tough to go into as much as we say oh like well, we, we we love streaming we do all this we 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 cover tournaments we do and we do it at a great uh at a we do it at a great uh quality that's what the biggest thing is with this company is quality but with the Jola Montang, they gave us 70 games out of 350, I think Jeff said that was for the whole tournament. We got 70 games. So with 70 games, quality is where my head was at. It's like, okay, are we going to make sure these games are quality for 70 games? And we delivered. We delivered. And we kind of delivered under short notice because we knew that uh, the government of Nova Scotia didn't announce tournaments back, I think, until maybe two to three weeks before the tournament actually started. So... Excuse me, I gotta take a drink here. So, uh, really proud of the company for delivering under pressure, um, and we did such a good job. The, you know, we I'm not gonna sit here and just say we're the best. We did all this. It's great. It's you have in order to give yourself praise, you have to let other people speak for you. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we, you look at our messages, you look at our DMs, you look at our emails, you look at Facebook messages, and it's all positive, all positive. It's almost like we put our foot into a market that wasn't really created, but was slowly starting to become a, a, a popular thing here in the HRM in terms in terms of live streaming, and uh, we've we we have two feet firmly planted down in that marketplace if you ask me i remember back when i went to nscc and i was we took a i took a business class and i remember i didn't take much from the class but i remember one class the teacher said something to me that resonated with me and he said if you want to become a successful business person a successful whatever you have to find a market that already exists and demand your respect within the marketplace. Meaning, okay, let's say you're making jeans and you know who makes the best jeans in the world. You know, you got Gap, you got sure, Club Monaco, you got Levi's, you have who are, you know, they make the best jeans. If you're going to make a pair of jeans, you have to step into that actual marketplace and demand respect and produce quality jeans. And that's kind of the way I saw, I guess, live streaming two years ago was it was going to become a popular thing at the very beginning. Not so much. A hot start like i think to start we had two teams under contract maybe three now i don't now we're in the double digits for sure somewhere but the way i see it is that we we've not forced our way in but we've definitely moved into the local hockey community we say we're here for the right reasons we've planted two feet firmly in the in the marketplace and uh and i think we've delivered quality and I'm proud of the group we have here at High Button Sports for delivering quality. It looks like you want to say something. No, uh, just yeah, it was a uh, it was quite the it was quite the week. Like you said, 70 games. I don't know if you can ever really prepare for that. Obviously, we've had a season to kind of prepare for it, but you know, it was it was definitely something, man. Ever getting in there every morning, every night, just whatever the wind, kind of whatever the wind blew. That's the interesting part. Usually, it's our. Uh, Usually a lot of the stuff we do here is based on what you want to do. And it was interesting to kind of have it be uh, be in the tournament's hands for a week, too. It was probably it was good for us. And, man, it's quite the experience. It was definitely a good w- definitely a good week. But, man, setting up that Scotia 2, grinding out those games was fun. And it was good to get to know the players and stuff and have a bigger, live like, longer live stream experience. But, yeah, it was, it was quite something. I think about you know what the um, do you know what the Pee Wee International AAA tournament is? You've heard of that, obviously. Yeah. 
So when I played in that tournament, there was uh, the game was taped, but mm. it was uh, it was on a VHS, and you know maybe only oh seven God. parents bought the VHS. And to this day, I always wish I could go back and watch that tape. I think I know maybe a couple parents that have it, maybe not. I could be completely wrong. But to this day, sitting in this chair as a 30-year-old man, I wish I could go back and watch myself when I was 12, 13 years old play in that tournament. We played Victoriaville. We represented the Mooseheads. Um, and like I said, to this day, I still wish I could go back and watch that game. And now I think about, okay, we just recorded 70 games for a bunch of, you know, we, there was a couple 17-year-olds and then all the way down to 12, maybe 11 years old. Yeah. Now those kids are going to have that memory of being able to see themselves play hockey for the rest of their life. Hopefully one day they're, they'll be 30 years old, they'll be on a lunch break, and they'll be talking about a game at the Joe Lamontang, and look, this happened, and the guy's going to be calling <laughs> him out at the lunch table. He's going, that didn't happen. What are you talking about? He goes, well, I'll bring up the high button video. I'll bring it up right now, and I'll show you, you know, 17 years from now. And I think that's – got to take a sorry a sip of my coffee here. And I think that's – Call me a nerd, but I think that's the coolest thing ever. I it's it's such a simple thing, but I think it's the coolest thing there is. It is pretty cool, man. It is cool, like doing that doing that game. Like one thing I noticed, I did that one game the first day. I did commentary for it, and uh, the game went to eighth round of the shootout, right? And it was the most people I'd ever had watching one of the games I was doing. It was fun, and it was got to get right into it. Had a great ending, lots of drama, exactly what you want from a hockey game. And then since then, I've like gone back and looked, and the views have like doubled and tripled themselves. So that yeah. so that shows like when I uploaded, I think it was at like three hundred view or maybe a little more than that, like four hundred people had totally watched it, and then it just hit like a thousand views the other night. So that means it's six hundred times since then. A week from ago, yeah. people have clicked into that video wanting to watch that intense eight round shootout of the U thirteen double A division or whatever. So to your point, it's definitely uh it's definitely a cool little memory. And even like those Barons games I do, they they're able to go back and watch them and after the game the kids, you know, the kids learn the voice, they get to go out there, have their whole season called. So it's definitely a cool feeling. Especially when you can see the numbers going up every day. Mm. People still interested in these games we did a week ago. Mm. So it definitely, um, yeah, it's one of the more rewarding parts of it. There's something I like that you used the the word reward. The the one thing I really do enjoy about this business is the reward factor of putting your work on display and getting people to comment on it. It's a risky business because mm. if you don't have thick skin and you put something out to the world and the world doesn't like it, they're they're gonna let you know. We know what. You know, it's what year is it? 2022. We, we, we know how cruel people can be. We know what people can say to you on the Internet. You have to have thick skin. And uh, in this business, there's a risk and a reward factor. And if you're going to put even this podcast, if people are watching this podcast, but people have every right to let me know, Justin, that episode sucked. Justin, you <laughs> suck. Justin, your everything sucks. People have the right to say that 100 percent. I remember before I started this business, I looked myself in the mirror. And I said, Justin, if you're really going to do this for the rest of your life, you need to be able to be aware of other people's opinions. But at the same time, you have to block them out because, you know, we, we, we've got a bad comment on a live stream during this tournament. Like, ah, something happened. What? I, I, back of my head, I can't really think about what it was. But that's one comment. The rest, positive. It's a it's it's a it's it's a scary thing going into a business where the mo like no offense to you know a librarian or other you, your job isn't put on a public form where people can form opinions about you. It's a scary thing to a lot of people. It's it's not scary to me now, but at the very beginning, you know, people calling me out on like episode seven of the podcast. You're like, fuck, should I be doing what? Am, Justin, yeah. what are we? Sorry, I am a, I the coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you had one yet today? Is that your first? This is my second. Okay. But you're, um, just, you're going at that thing yeah. like a, but, uh, a business here. What was I saying? You were just saying uh, you've got a thick skin. On a public form, yeah. On a public form, yeah. So to put something on a public form for 70 games and the majority, you know, 99.9% .9 is all positive feedback, you, you, you bet your ass 
like uh, I'm going home smiling. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm not exhausted anymore, but if, you know, I'd say <laughs> yesterday is when I recovered. Yeah, like yesterday, I I, we were uh, all in. We all needed a little recovery. Hundred percent. I never, see, I never, I had understood, but I had never seen you so like just for a week, just so like in the zone. I was going home thinking like, man, this is tough, but yeah, Justin's really good. Like, have you ever seen this the movie? This guy looks like a not not a broken man, but this guy looks like he's been worked to the bone. Have you ever week. seen the the movie uh, Fury? I don't think so, With man. Brad Pitt, Shia, Shia LaBeouf. So oh, it's yes, actually, yes, it, yes, so okay, it's a I movie essentially that, about yeah. World War II. They're in uh, like Nazi Germany and they're they're fighting the Germans and Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, the whole crew. They're on a tank, so they're all. It's I think it's like five guys. They're all on a tank together. And um, the beginning of the movie essentially starts. They 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 get back from a big mission. And they're all exhausted. I don't know how long they were on the mission for. Excuse me. And uh, I really shouldn't be drinking coffee during the podcast. I apologize yeah, to all the listeners. In their ears oh, I know. It's there, not buddy. good. Come on. I apologize. <laughs> I honestly, I feel... Ten good. times in the first ten minutes. Well, I'm trying to take bigger gulps here so I don't have to. <laughs> um, so anyways, they get back to, uh, to camp. And, you know, let's just assume they were out in that tank for the past month fighting, killing, slaughtering Nazis. They come back and everyone's exhausted, you know, but Brad Pitt, he's the leader of the crew and he gets off and he starts walking away from the tank and everyone's like, you know, where are you going? I forget what his name was in the movie. So let's just, we'll just call him Brad. Everyone's like, Brad, where are you going? And he goes, I got to go take a piss. What? I can't take a piss by myself. Like I got to leave for a second. And he walks over like behind a, a building. He doesn't actually have to take a piss, but he has to take a breath. He has to like cry for a second. He has mm. to. And the point of it is he doesn't want his team to see him be weak. His mm. team doesn't want, he doesn't want his team to see him fall under pressure. He doesn't want his team to see him have any emotion. And that scene always sticks with me in, in, in situations like the Joel among Tang where we're on game 69. There's of right. course times where I just want to go, dude, what are we just, you know, there, of course, I know. Yeah, of course. I got 18 emails to reply to. I got family calling me. Justin, can you come over for dinner tomorrow night? I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't reply because I'm holding the camera. Like there's there's a million things going through my mind. But game 69, U18 C Tatum Gush versus whoever. You have to focus on that, and you can't. Uh, you, you you can't surrender. And I always remember that scene in Fury where where, where Brad gets off the tank, goes around the corner, and just takes a breath to himself. I had to do that during the tournament. I had to, like, yeah, I was like, boys, I'm going to go take a piss. I didn't go piss. I just went outside just to, like, take a breath. It's okay. You can do this. So I always remember that that scene and how it can relate to the, to being a leader, especially in a hectic scenario where we're all kind of biting at the bit to finish that uh, to finish the event. You know what I mean? How do you, um, how do you feel like you did in the end? Are you happy with, like, you know – it was a it was a long week. Are was you happy with how you did? Like just as a you know as a boss, I don't think I can think back to you showing. Like I said, if you had any moments of weakness, you must have uh, taken you your bathroom break to show it. But like I said, over the course of the week, I've been around you a lot. We obviously were all kind of broken down, you know, like not broken down, but it was just like I said, it was like you said, seventy games in nine days. It was a lot for us. So. Were you happy with how it all kind of yeah, of course played out and like how the team pulled together and that yep. sort of side of it? Yep. You know, we got the you know dudes planted the seed, got the tournament, we did it, and then what came from it was emails of getting other tournaments. So yeah. even during the tournament, people are like, "Okay, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you yeah, can you do this? Can you do that?" So, uh, you know, a seed was planted and a flower was born, essentially. Now we're, we're, we're blooming, we're blossoming, and we, we have contracts coming out uh, this next month. And, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be a big, uh, you know, trust and stepping stone for you going to, to Brooklyn to do the Amherst, or not Amherst, the high school uh, girls tournament while me and dudes are in uh, Wolfville. Uh, Wolfville, sorry, for the U Sports uh, National Championship. I was talking to a couple of the guys yesterday, actually. So... Uh, St. Avex will be there, UNB, and then Acadia. So three uh, local teams going yeah, up. That'll be sweet. Do you have any idea what you're gonna, what your plan? Do you have any plan heading in there? What kind of coverage wise? You bringing the podcast set up, bringing the like mic, like the I guess the street interview set up. Yeah. Any anything you can tease? You know what I like about you, Jeff. When it, you, you know what I like about you. Whenever you drive around, you like to crack the window. You know what that tells me? <laughs> you need a feel of the streets. 
You need to get a sense of the wind. What's the temperature out? Can you hear the streets? That's exactly what I plan to do when I go to Wolfville. When I drive in the city, I'm going to have that window cracked down. You got to listen to the streets. You got to drive by the bar. You got to go to the rink. You have to observe. There isn't really a necessarily a, a huge plan when we go there, but you definitely have to drive into the city with the window cracked and you have to listen. You have to listen. You can't go in there with a plan and go, look, we're doing this, we're doing yeah, that, yeah. we're doing, and just tell the city what you're doing. That's not how business, that's not how life, that's <laughs> not how anything works. It's true. You need to listen and then react. That's all this world is, is listening and reacting. If you go in, you think you have a plan. No, 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 sir. You and dudes are good at that. The experience, I think, the years of doing the uh, the tournaments, and you guys went up, did the uh, did that one with the Max, and like you kind of know what it's like to maybe follow a team or follow an event and adapt on the the fly. So I'm excited to see what you guys will will do. You got to be able to I'll work be, on a win. We're I'll we're we're gonna be down with you. Yeah, I'll like, be over in Brooklyn doing the doing my thing. So it's a 30 minute drive. Yeah, 25 I think to the air from rink to the airbnb so something like that we're gonna come down uh we're gonna come down and see you yeah it would be nice <laughs> really? to are you really gonna like um, <laughs> yeah it's it's it, you i want to do like a little mic'd up there like yeah, a little yeah. something like so for the even for i don't even know if i can announce that yet and maybe, maybe not. I, I i'll keep it i won't say anything yet you can definitely talk i can talk about like the high school girls yeah, thing yeah, yeah for sure yeah but uh for that for that like here's here's what I always uh not always I guess in the past year I've thought of when so for uh, for example I'll talk I won't say the tournament but we just we booked a tournament uh like 2 days ago. I won't say it yet. But oh that meeting is today actually. Oh we got time. Um you know I booked a tournament uh a couple days ago. And during that tournament you're going to be somewhere else with Theo. Mhm. And I'm very fortunate that, but that one day before that other tournament starts, I'm going to be with you for that one day. So my thought process is, okay, for that one day while I'm with you is to bring the high button experience. You're going to bring the live streaming experience, but yeah. it's my duty to go and do the, 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 maybe a, you know, a mic'd up, maybe do a podcast with the team organizer, do, do something that goes above and beyond. That's all this business is, is going above and beyond and making sure that the tournament or the, the team or the company we're working with gets recognition on a on a bigger scale rather than just live streaming. Perfect example, Joe LaMontagne. We got that wicked mic'd up clip of Paul Mason, Sidney Crosby's minor league coach that almost made national television that clip. It didn't. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I almost freaked out. That you you talk about a you talk about something where fuck I jeez. You'd want to talk about me getting upset. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a great. You know what I mean? Like great clip. Hey, it hit a hundred k on TikTok. I'll take that. You know, but then you know the news. The news is going. I know, I know, I know. And you know who you are. Whoever it was that made me do all that work, get the clips, and then not air it. I was not happy about that. I don't. I don't care if the guy hears me. I don't even know what the guy's name was. But it was a great clip. Yeah. It was a great clip. Yeah. Anyways, it was a great clip, but that's what I mean. Like going above and beyond and making sure that the tournament, the organization, the team, the coach, whatever it is, whoever we're working with, gets that exposure um, on some other level. I'm not going to say a clip's going to make national television every time, but that's the goal. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah, that <laughs> man, that ate me up. <laughs> yeah, the fact, that stuff doesn't usually eat you up, man. It's, the it's the fact that they were like, hey, "Can we get the clips quick? Can we get the clips quick?" And it was first thing in the morning, and I'm trying to get the streams ready. So I'm doing work for someone else. I'm not getting paid for, mm. and then they don't air it. It's yeah. like, what are you doing? Uh, comes with the territory, I guess. Eh? Yeah. What are, what are you gonna Sport do? Support media business. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, high school girls, yeah, tournaments. Yeah, you talking about bringing the high button experience. Anyway, so this is always one thing I, I worry about in the past year is making sure that we don't spread ourselves too thin. So this is where you come into play starting next weekend in high school. It's mm -hmm. like I know you're going to deliver on the live streaming stuff. You're going to do a great job. We, we, we trust you. But it's uh, it's almost my duty to, to, to show face. It's my duty to get there and show face, shake a hand, listen to someone, and then provide a little bit more. And I yeah. want to do that everywhere that we go. So the, these events and things that we're booking and the scheduling aspect of it, you know, spreading yourself too thin is our biggest enemy, I think. Yeah, it's going to yeah, it's definitely that's definitely part of it. That's that's good, though. I'm glad you're going to be in there. So you're going to plan to come in. We're still talking about the girls hockey. Yeah. OK. Well, while we're up in Wolfville. The yeah. Yeah. Do you have your schedule? I sent you that. Yeah, schedule. yeah no, it's all it's all in there. I was just wondering. Yeah. So that first day. 
I think they're going to be up there a bit. Probably. Maybe the second day. Yeah. First day, I, there's going to be a lot of buzz around Wolfville, so yeah. I'd like to be there all day. And we got that 8 a.m. game, so. Mm. Oh, you do? I do, yeah. So, so we'll, maybe we'll, the second day would be better. Yeah, well, well, this is what I mean, like the scheduling aspect. We're just going to have to look at the schedule and then plan a day for us to come down. And we got to find a team, someone that wants to be mic'd up. We got to. There's a lot of logistics that go into it. You know, provincials, some uh, – like I was talking to a couple guys from the, the U Sports National Championship that are happening in Wolfville next weekend. And I'm trying to I'm trying to schedule some things, but at the same time, you don't want to step on anyone's toes because they're competing for a national championship. You're not going to message a guy and be like, hey, Dylan, do you want to do a podcast like an yeah. hour after you play UNB? It's like, no. We had our experience with that, eh? Trying to get a, trying to get a little mic'd up last minute during a big game, you know? It, yeah. It's different. You know, it's yeah. – so – yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I know you didn't. <laughs> but, uh, that was quite the day. But so that's what I mean. So that's kind of where it's a read and react situation. We're not going to go in there and try to, to mic up players during a toy. That's just not how it works. So where does your head automatically go? As a business person, it goes, okay, now we've got to go to the bars and interview the people. Now we got to talk to the fans. We have to do street interviews. We maybe we'll talk to a couple volunteers. Set up a podcast studio, maybe in the rink. Hopefully, there's like an extra uh, an extra room somewhere we can set up some mics and do some content that way. Just essentially, you, 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 like I said, this business is about reading and then reacting. Just like life, you got to read and then you have to react. And if you do it the right way uh, enough times, you'll be successful. And we've done tournaments like this, like the yeah, I haven't Memorial been around for Cup. Any. I haven't been around for you guys just having media coverage. Well, let me ask you this. Remember yeah. when I said the Joe started, I was like, wait till you feel it. Did you feel it? The the momentum? Oh, yeah, for sure. The momentum for the company. Yeah. Like you said, lots of contracts came from it. Those first two days, man, we were on like, it was like we were on cloud nine. It was, it was a good feeling doing that first Sidney Crosby shootout, getting like all the positive support on that all day. Then the first day games, like... Me, Mark, just dudes, just going back and forth, just banging out games. It was uh, it was an awesome feeling. It was cool, and you definitely felt the rewards when you see all the comments and like even when you posted the Twitter thing at the end of the week and like all the replies to it were about how much like it was it was great for these parents to watch. It's uh, it's cool. It was good, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the feeling that I chase. Yeah. It's the best. Like the, the Memorial Cup, we felt it probably for the first time three years ago, maybe four now. Time's flying. But yeah, the first time I felt it, Memorial Cup. I'm trying to think of another time I really felt it, other than the Joe. I can't think of it, but Boston. What about when you did that Max trip? The McDonald's. Yeah, you made that well, yeah, video of course. That went, that went yeah. really well on of the course. online. Thunder Bay, Telus Cup with the yeah. Max. That was another one. That was one. a great video. But it's that momentum and that uh, that high that I chase. It's the best feeling. It's how the best. How much of that high were you feeling by day nine? No, I wasn't feeling any. <laughs> but that's the one thing. Come and gone. But that's one thing I got to figure out for next year. Or we have to figure out for next year is how do we have that same momentum and that same energy as day one on day. Next year we're mo we're gonna potentially be doing a lot more games. So it's like how do we have that same feeling on day one as we have on day twelve? It's like we need fresh blood in there, and it's yeah, almost like I. It's yeah. almost like you want to split it up. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, like, you're you're the crew who's working the first six. Yeah. You're the crew who's working the last six. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Or like three sets of what, nine nine day tournament, three sets of three. Yeah. Something like that. Well, that might be a good idea. You know what I mean? Got a year to figure it out, I guess. Yeah. But uh, one thing I am excited about the U Sports uh, Men's National Hockey Championship up in beautiful Wolfville, Nova Scotia, is um, it's different. We're not live streaming. You know, we usually when we do go to events, we're live streaming, but this is kind of strictly personality based, meaning street interviews and podcasts and maybe post game interviews outside the dressing room. It's not so much uh, game related. It's more personality driven. And that's the foundation of this company is based on personalities in, in, in Canada is how it started. Not so much the live streaming aspect, so I'm I'm kind of excited to go back to that uh, that route, just like the Mem Cup. We didn't live stream at the Mem Cup. We just yeah. it was just interviewing people, having fun, getting to know people. We met you know we met Mavs for the first time, 
you yeah, know, Jim. Kenzie, the, the, we met a lot of people from uh, Sportsnet. We met uh, Caroline Cameron and uh, Armstrong. Yeah. Um, who else did we meet? We met a, a bunch of big dogs. Um, so when we go up to this U Sports Championship, I, I hope it's the same thing. We get to meet a lot of people, create some relationships, be able to work together in the future. Um, potential podcast guests as well. That's why I really yeah, think it, yeah. I got to do that today. I'm going to figure that out today. Figure out I, what? Well, I just want to call the rink and just be like, look, we're – we're coming up. Is there our Airbnb? Yeah, I was about to say, isn't the Airbnb right next to it? It is next to it, but it's not the best setup for. Uh, maybe it is. I, I I've only seen pictures, and from the pictures, it just there's like one, only one couch, a chair. Yeah, yeah. Where does it compare to your mom's basement? That setup, but yeah, my mom's basement was start. tremendous. <laughs> like that basement for my mom, my parents. It was a great basement to start an, a podcast. But the the Airbnb. I'll, that you know, that's a read and react thing. We're gonna go up. We're gonna take a look and be like, eh, could we host an episode here or not? But preferably, well, the, the thing is, we're a ten minute walk from the rink, our, our Airbnb. But I would still preferably like to have a home base at the rink. So I'm gonna call, see if there's like an extra bingo room, yeah, like a yeah. corner in a bingo room where we can set up something, and just hopefully bang out. You know, we're up there for four days, three nights. I'd love to get three podcasts in, maybe. That four is pushing it, but <laughs> I'd love to get three podcasts in up there. A mic. You're going on the record saying this, so anyone listening, you gotta keep your eye out for the U Sports podcasts. Justin's yeah. putting it putting it on the line. Three podcasts is what he wants. And then uh, you know, two one street interview, two's tough. Yeah, I think the street interviews will be easier than the podcast during this week. No, it's just the questions. It's like you, there's really only a couple questions you can ask. How are, you, are you excited for the U Sports Championship? What do you love about Wolfville? Who are you cheering for? Where but Where are you from? That's one of the things where you can read and react. Like if there's something that happens crazy in the semifinal game and heading into the finals, all those same fans like of X or whatever are watching. That's like where you can make another street interview. Before the finals, talking to ex about like the ex players about the game before or something like that. The players? No, not the players. The fans, like heading yeah. into the stadium. You know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of like a read and react. Mm. You say there's only so many questions you can ask, but by day three, something that's crazy might have happened. That's fair. And you might have a great video you're just sitting on, that's and you fair. can bang out questions because everyone wants to talk about it. The, you know, the, it's a, you uh, never know. The other thing is the location. Where do you do the street interviews? Do you do it outside the rink? Do you do it outside the bars? They're only outside the bars and outside the rink are a two minute walk. It's just they're right next to each other, but still, it's a it's location, it's timing. There's a lot that goes into street interviews. You know, like us, like looking for yeah, people all winter downtown it looks Halifax. So easy. It looks like the easiest thing ever until it, until you have to do it. It man, like street interviews in the middle of August on Spring Garden Road is the easiest thing to do. Uh. Nine out of twenty people have a couple drinks in them. They're have they're having a great time. The weather's good. It's packed. It's busy. Everyone loves cameras and a mic. Well, most people, and uh, it's easy. But uh, hopefully, this is the same uh, up here in Wolfville. Hopefully, yeah. the weather's nice. Hopefully, people are out and about. Hopefully, people are willing to talk. They have to be happy. They're at a national championship. Why wouldn't you be excited? So hopefully, it'll be good. And uh, we'll meet some people, build some relationships. Shake some hands. Watch some great hockey. We haven't even talked about the hockey. We're just thinking of work. Yeah, you but guys are going to get in for a treat. Yeah. You'll be able to, Have you lined up the schedules yet? Are you going to be able to catch any games? Probably not. I mean, I got I think eight or nine games to do over the course of those four days. So maybe actually maybe the last day, but I don't think I have a media pass with you guys. So yeah, the we games can might be sold out and stuff. So it might be a little tough for for me to catch yeah. some. We'll f- we'll figure it out. Well, if yeah. you if you if there if you do want to come to a game, we'll. Uh, yeah. We'll somehow figure it out. That uh it'll be good though, you guys will I know Dudes is excited too. He's not here today, but I'm sure he would like to have been if he could. But yeah, he'll be we'll be buzzing around, it'll be good. I'll be out in Brooklyn and then we're on to the next thing. Yeah, it's another challenge. <laughs> it's yeah. like Dude, well you, you saw the challenge of us trying to set it up. Do you like challenges? Yes, for sure. Troubleshooting. You can't be in this business if you don't like that stuff, man. Oh, it's the best business. That's, yeah. It's very rewarding. There's low lows and high highs when it comes to that stuff. So, yeah, I like you that. You know, like, I don't, I'll, I'll be, like, I had a couple, the day we went up to go set up, figure out the Brooklyn setup, like, that whole night, I just dreamt, or, like, I don't know if you call it dream or, like, just what, but all I could think about all night was how those streams were going to go because we have to switch it up and, like, you know, we had to adapt and figure out problems. So now I'm just, uh, I'm excited. I mean, I have faith in it, but it's definitely something when you, like you said, come across a problem we needed a solution right. and now it's kind of like all right 
It'll be uh, it'll be interesting, but I'm sure it'll yeah. work out in the end. That would have been faith. a that would have been a good behind the scenes video. Oh yeah, we should have had <laughs> we should have had I should have called quickly. Logan for that. Just follow us around as we try to set up a network well, like, in Brooklyn. <laughs> I know when I'm on YouTube and I watch people solve problems, it's fun. Like I love. I love watching other people solve problems. Yeah. It makes me feel like I'm solving the problem. That I just feel like it would have been a cool video. Yeah, we should have done that. Been. It was a. Uh, it was definitely down to the wire on that one. Down to yeah. the wire. It'll be good, man. Well, no, we'll be there to help you set up again. One thing yeah. I do worry about is there. There that rink was empty when we were connecting. Yeah. And you know how us and internet are. If, if there's people in there, it could potentially yeah. interfere. The good thing is it is our own network. So it's not like we're going to be hooking on to the public network. I know that the people in the building and that sort of thing may mess with it. But the big problem when it comes to that is that we're all on the same network, right? Yeah. So it's like more people in the rink watching the game, more people on the network. Luck- luckily, we've got our own network set up that no one knows the password to. So in theory, it should just be me on the network all weekend. But like you said, the people, the phones, the other internet, mm. that might play a factor but mm. what are we what are you gonna do man you gotta we got it we'll figure it out that, the good thing is that we're only what 25 minutes away from you yeah worst case scenario. i can't imagine you guys are gonna be wanting to book it over there for we'll 25 probably minutes definitely one way, not 25 the other way too much though this is where you know I this is be, where this is where you step up and yeah, prove it's all to fine us and dandy now i might be here getting into my ear figure it out we're not coming <laughs> we're not coming down we got a game in an hour you'll figure it out yeah i'm not i'm not too worried about it. it'll be fun big announcement I golfed yesterday for the first time in the year 2022 outdoors. Fox Hollow. It, it was. How do I explain it? Magical. Just. You know, day nine at the Joe, you're thinking of golf. You just want to hit a ball and watch it. What is. <laughs> Soar into the woods, what buddy. Is, uh, is that what you were thinking What is of? Kramer doing Seinfeld? <laughs> he goes, uh, you just. Have you seen that clip when he hits the, the he hits the Titleist into the 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 whale's hole on his like his breathing hole? <laughs> you just watch it sail and you watch it drop. Anyways, that's what that drop into the pond. It was uh, oh man, it was fun and it wasn't it was cold in the morning. I think we teed off at nine a.m. By the time we were on the fourth hole, I was taking layers off. I probably had five layers oh. on because it was cold. But by the time, like, yeah, like the fifth, sixth hole, I was layering down because the sun was out. It wasn't windy at all. The ground was uh, thawing a bit. Like, it, it wasn't hard. Mm. It didn't bounce as much as I thought it would. That's good. Um, no birdies. couple pars. A lot yeah, of bogeys. A lot of double bogeys. On here? I, I didn't even. I, I shot a 45 in the front. So, not the best. And then on the back, you know. I think I had a couple blow up holes where Got I was seven control. on a par four, so I, I probably shot like ninety five hundred. It wasn't, you know, not, yeah. not, but, but, I thought I was gonna lose a lot more fundamentals than, uh, than I, than I thought, and I, 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 you know, I got new irons coming, so hopefully those will help. Probably not, but we'll see what happens. But no, it was a great time. Fox Hollow, me dudes wig, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, that's one thing we're going to try to do up in Wolfville because there's a couple of spaces in between where there's not a lot of whole lot to do. So You're going to try to golf on oh, top yeah, of it? Oh, yeah, we're going to try to go to oh uh, – man. There's three courses up there within a 30-minute drive. You got uh, Kenwo, but I don't think Kenwo is open. And then you have uh, Avon Valley, and then you also have Eagle Crest is there. So we're gonna try. I don't. I I, I was checking last night uh, to see which ones were open, but I think Eagle Crest is the one that's open. That's another thing I got to do today is call a couple courses up there, and see if they're open. Cause some golf up there would be a nice little break in the day. It'd be. It would be just be a lot of fun. Yeah. A little work, little be. play. <laughs> I'm I'm starting to figure <laughs> out. Amped. What? I, said, I just said you're ramped up. I don't blame you. It'll be it'll be fun. I'm starting you're... to figure out that like like. I am more productive when I work. When I work hard, usually right before the hard work, I have a little bit of fun. Mm. I can't. I I'm not the guy to work. Be honest. By the end, second weekend there in the Joe, there was you weren't having much fun that week. Like no. you're having fun within the tournament, uh, the tournament setting, and it was still very rewarding, like we talked about. But you didn't work in any golf last week or any. No, because you're yeah. you're you know I'm Brad Pitt on the tank. I'm at war when I'm on day nine at the Joe, day seven at the Joe. I'm, oh, I'm Brad man. Pitt on the tank. It's a it's a head down. That's why I always put hockey into I, I, into life. Dudes does it as well. Oh, it's, he's so good at that. Man. You know, you're 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 game seven. You're overtime. You're on the fourth line. You're chipping in. You're blocking shots. You're putting your head down, and you're doing whatever it takes 
just to get out of the game with a, a, a W, a win, a victory, a success. That's all you're trying to do is to get out of that tournament with a win. Make sure that everyone is happy. Make sure that you put your best foot forward. And at the end of the day, make sure the kids get the best experience possible. That's one thing I did think about throughout it when it, there was times that were tough. It's you got to think of the kids and you got to think of the grandparents that, you know, that, that we had. We did one game for uh, we didn't even plan on doing it, but there was a grandmother in a hospital and. Uh, she wasn't able to attend the game to see her grandson. And that, I think I got that message like five days into the tournament, but then we ended up streaming it three days later. So I remember when I got that message on day five, I was starting to feel a little tired, whatever it was. And I remember just thinking of that message like, oh, man, there's a grandmother in a hospital unable to see her grandchild play. And we're here providing a service that puts a smile on a woman's face sitting in a hospital bed. So that kind of gave me a little bit of hope. And a little bit of, uh, you know, there's a purpose, there's a reason why you're here. Call me corny, call me whatever you want to call me. But it's little things like that throughout the tournament that gave me motivation. A lot of emails from parents saying, yeah, you know, my cousin in Vancouver saw this. My, my, my cousin in Vancouver has never seen my child play. You made his day. You made our family's day. Like those. Everyone benefited, man. I, I had a great time calling it too, man. I must have called. It was a learning experience for me too and dudes. Dude said he hadn't. He'd called three games in his career, and he had put up a yeah. at least twenty five games. I think everyone learned a little shootout. I think everyone over learned that week. a little. I think everyone learned a little bit about themselves. Yeah, for everyone sure. learned. Even Mark. I think Mark learned a little bit about himself on uh, on how to be a team guy, on how to understand understand to read a room when tensions are a little bit high between the group. Yeah, and just to put a smile on your face and like I said, head down, block shots, chip pucks in deep, and work hard. I think everyone learned a lot about themselves i know i did i know you did i know yeah. dudes did and i think mark did as well um and i i know for a fact that that week is going to benefit us going into next week i can't wait ne this is going to be such a fun fun summer for us because we've we've we're, as much as i know dudes like i've known dudes since he was uh 10 9 years old and as much as i think i know him i learned a little bit about dudes this week yeah. Then I never, you know, like I, I learned a little bit about him. I'm not going to go into detail, but same with you. Like I've known you for what, a year and a half, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, I've, I've learned the levels that you can go to. I want to push you. Mm. I want to push everyone in the company, but I've learned, I've learned how to push people a little bit and I know how much to take and I know how much to give. So d definitely a learning experience. And this past week, excuse me, from the Joe Lamont Tang is going to benefit us this summer when it comes to being busy and keeping a cool, calm, and collective demeanor going into busy schedules. Right now, if you look at our Google Calendar, Jeff, it's, it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's busy with a lot of potentials. And those potentials will come. But with that being said, it doesn't scare me anymore. Maybe, no, no. This, maybe this time last year, if I, okay, how about this? Look at our schedule for March. It's a little overwhelming. If I and saw it, yeah. if I saw that schedule this time last year, you know, I'd be up on the toilet, you know, you, you <laughs> yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. you know, I just, I'd, I didn't feel overwhelmed by it necessarily. Yeah, no, I'm not saying, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is last year, yeah, if I saw that, sure. last year, I'd be like, I, yeah, yeah. I think the month of March, we had almost 120 streams, maybe a little less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ha yeah, like, maybe a little less, so it was definitely. You look at that last okay. year, a 2021 Justin Belanger. I'm not going to look at that with confidence. But right now, if you give me the month of uh, April with a live stream schedule of 270 games. It's going to be a heavy month, man. I'm fine. I'm going to go in the sauna. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. I'm going to sweat it out. I'm going to think. I'm going to put my phone away. I'm going to sit in a dark room and plan the month. It doesn't scare me anymore. And Maybe that's one of my strengths that other business individuals don't have is knowing their strengths. That's one thing we've figured out here. We know what you're good at. We know what dudes is good at. We know what Mark is good at. And we know what some other people within the company are good at as well. But we've figured out our strengths. And I think that is a key to our success. And maybe some other businesses don't know their employees as well as we do. If we work at a coffee shop and I know you're shit at making coffee but you know how to make one what are those bagels called with the salmon on them oh um, yeah lox bagels nice. lox bagels yeah do they have a specific name i think it's like salmon and lox with like the capers and the red onion yeah those are good so 
we work in a coffee shop. I know that you know how to make a lox bagel to the T's. You could make a lox bagel for the Prince of Wales if you wanted to, and it would be accept. Or no, the Prince of Wales is that Prince Andrew guy. Maybe don't is that. Maybe don't use him as an example. Politics aren't my strong suit. Let's just say yeah, let's not. just say you make a lox so good, you could make a, a lox for the Queen of England. There you go. Yes, the Queen of England, but you can't make you know a coffee to save your life. It's pretty obvious where we need you in the coffee shop. We need you in the coffee shop making locks so our customers come back and, hey, I need that locks from from Jeff. Jeff knows how to make a great locks. I'm going to come back every time and get a locks from Jeff. I don't want coffee from Jeff. I'll get coffee from Justin or Dudes or Mark. But if Jeff knows how to make a locks, I'm coming back to the high button coffee shop every time. And that's what we figured out here in the business. We know what you're good at. We still think you're getting better at what you mm. – we, we, we have high expectations for you. When me and Dudes are alone and we're talking about the company, high mm. expectations for you. We know what dudes is good at. We know what he can do. We know what Marks brings to the table. Yeah. And we know what you can do. And we, I, I, I think I'm still getting better, but I, I definitely could improve on some things. But I know what I'm good at in, in March of 2022 for Justin Belange. Like, well, I can yeah. handle it. But, you know what I mean? It's like, I, yeah, I see that point. But also, you know, you guys are always, you're trying to push, you're trying to push, uh, push me out of my comfort zone for sure, you know? I uh the whole sales pitch you know I've never been a salesman and you know that's something you guys uh want me to get into sto- through like through so I'd say my specialty is probably more on the tech side and the streaming side and the and the problem solve the internet side and then it's like something totally different which is pitching and selling and stuff which like you said that's probably my bagel right now that I or that's that's my coffee that's her coffee that's my coffee yeah. and my stream is the bagel yeah. you uh you still got you guys clearly have expectations of me being able to uh be able to make a coffee not to your not to your guys' level but in some capacity i think well that's the thing if you're going to be in this business you have to be versatile you know that yeah, whenever sure. we have co-op students come here and they sit with their guidance counselor what's one thing i say to the kids use your strengths to your advantage and use your resources i know you have resources growing up where you grow up the relationships you have yeah. And the confidence that you're starting to gain. You, sales isn't about a cold call and, you know, making a package. And, you know, when, when we were up in Brooklyn and I was like, we're, we're leaving. And I was like, you know, when we see the referee or sorry, when we see the Zamboni driver, what did I say to you? <laughs> you're like, you got you said something along the lines of you got to handle this or not like you got to handle this one. But like, like, go like be a people person or go thank them and let them know that like we appreciate like the opportunity and stuff. I said, go look, I said, go look him in his eyes, shake his hand, and say thank you. Mm. That's sales. And, but, buddy, was, I was ready for it. You were. You, you I'm saw not, the yeah, pep He was on the phone. He was on the phone. When, on you, the gave phone. That, when you gave me that, uh, that task, you but, saw. But, I was ready. But that, Jeff, is sales. You, you might think um, it's, it's, it's sales is looking a man in the eye, providing a service, shaking his hand or woman, and, and saying, hey, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. That guy is going to remember High Button Sports coming in there, showing the most utmost. Some people probably don't even know what I'm talking about. So we went out to Brooklyn, Nova Scotia the other day to set up a router uh, to see if we can get good internet for the high school girls' uh, uh, provincials coming up next week. Um, The rink was empty. When we got there, the rink was actually closed. Um, We had a couple calls, and we got the Zamboni driver to come open up the rink for us, and we could go in there and kind of do our thing. The Zamboni driver, you know, he sees a couple city slickers come in there, you know, we, we don't think we're running the show, but we definitely have a task at hand. So we're kind of in that urge that what's the word I'm looking for? We're we're there for a mission. We're not there to talk. And yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're there for a mission. You were dialed in. And for some, sure. maybe sometimes that can come off as being rude because we just don't we, we didn't want to converse with the dudes was talking to him, though. It was good for that. Um, but we had a mission. And we didn't want to come in and take over his rink because we were going in every corner of the rink, <laughs> opening doors, seeing if an alarm goes off, running wires through the roof. Open, can you open this door for us, sir? Yeah, like yeah. He, he was helping us in a, in a tremendous way. But in order to make that happen, you have to show you have to show an individual like that the mo- the most utmost respect. The Zamboni driver for a rink is the man with the keys. The guy, the Zamboni driver of, a rink, of the rink, is the man that you have to respect the most. You know, you treat the janitor as the same amount of respect as the CEO. It's kind of that mentality. So whenever yeah. you walk into a rink and you see a Zamboni driver, the man with the keys, whoever it is, you have to treat everyone with respect. But 
a guy that's helping you out, opening doors, giving you, you're asking him questions about the internet. You're going, you know, is this a, a steel roof or a tin roof? You know what? <laughs> and he knows, and he's giving you the time yeah, of yeah. day. That he he people, yeah, he's gonna talk about that scenario with his friends, with people in the Brooklyn community. And he's going to go, yeah, the side button guys, like they came by the other day, they were testing out some internet, they were doing this, they were doing that. Great kids. That is sales. Yeah. That is sales. Because the people that he's talking to about high button sports is a word of mouth thing. Oh, yeah, high button sports, they were over here the other day. They they were you know, they were going through a little internet thing, a little trouble. Hardworking kids, they were trying, you know, they were doing, they were yeah. working there. And the guy he's talking to owns a construction company, and his cousin owns a, a beverage company. And we get brought up at a dinner table, and then one day we reach out to the beverage company. It's like, oh, yeah, those high button sports guys, they were doing the internet, and they had good things to say. That is sales. Everywhere you go, I, I say this t- when I go to the grocery store and I wear a high button logo, hat, anything, like that's sales. You, you, you run into someone, you're wearing Crocs, pajamas, and a hoodie. You got you, you smell like shit. <laughs> that what are you doing? That's not yeah yeah. Sales is leaving the house every day with uh. a demeanor. That is sales. Shake a hand, look the person in the eye, say thank you very much, and at the end of the day, you just have to say how can I help. That's I, sales. I believe you, man. You do not get to where you're at with this company without knowing what you're doing with the sales side. So I I take I tr- I trust everything you say, man. It's people uh. People don't wanna really get it until they're a part of it. You know what I mean? It it seems so easy from the outside, but it really uh it really is when I'm on when I'm so, when I work so close to you and dudes and I see kind of the experience and you remind me like we've been at this 4 years or longer than that, but that's what I think that's what dudes has been doing with you, so that's what he would say. Um it definitely shows. So I agree, man, and uh it's nice, to, like it's funny, cause like there's the sales of like us just doing a good job during the live streaming. Like we got a lot of these contracts to finish out the year because of how good of a job we did just doing what we were told to do. But the difference is what you're talking about right now, and it's being like that good owner and that good community member, and showing that you care and that you are doing this for the right intentions. And that's the difference between just putting on a live stream, or being high button sports so i'd say yeah 80 percent 80 percent of the brand deals that we've had the meetings are just getting to know the guy or the girl yeah just how are you but do you know what i'm, you know yeah. what I'm saying oh, like i do putting i putting like the quality work in like we had the the situation there's another big tournament coming up in uh in halifax and we obviously just did one of the bigger ones in the joe and then this other big one is it was just kind of expected we would be there because we did such a great job and people were so into our live streams at the Joe. And even if we're not there for that tournament, we got brought on for the like you know the provincial tournaments. And then the uh, um, you know I don't know if I can really talk about it still, but one of the con- one of the teams that we did a year long contract with wanted us to come back and do the provincials they're hosting. Oh, is that still going? Is that still on? Oh, that's a thing, buddy. That's oh, a thing. It? That's okay, a, okay. Yeah, that's halfway. We got to talk April. about that. Yeah, but you know what I mean. So that's us putting in hard work for an entire year. And then it paying off at the end in the form of them wanting us to do every provincial yeah. game and paying for like games that they're not even a part of. Yeah. So it's a combination of the two. And um, obviously, I've seen it more on the live streaming side. But to see you know the how it works out for you guys, just doing the sales and just being a good community member, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's good to learn. I, li- I like it. It's fun. How much time are we at? 50 minutes, including the intro. 50 minutes? Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's how you know we've got a lot to talk about, a lot of ground to cover. We haven't talked in a few days also. You go 50 yeah. minutes just talking about this stuff. Yeah, we've got a lot to talk about for, uh, what's today, Friday? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to, uh, how many streams? This we'll weekend might be our, st- our, our tamest weekend for the next month and a half. For sure, because we don't have any tournaments this weekend. We just got yeah, the yeah, yeah. couple of regular season playoff games. I have a couple things to do this to weekend, though, like uh, that I need the camera for. We'll figure that out after. Oh yeah. Um, did you see uh, Hyman's penalty kill yesterday, last night? The one yeah. penalty kill where he had the puck, I think, for at least forty-five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Holy course, smokes! Man. My Oilers, dude, they're they're making me proud right now. Holy it's been quite smokes! The year. That was incredible. 
Yeah. And they had a, the there was a kid he has like stage three cancer at Ben. Yes. And he came yeah. out and he was in the interview. He was in the post game interview with Hyman and he was on the blue line, and he got a standing O. I was like, oh my god, that was a great night, unbelievable. Yeah. Did you watch the full Oilers game there? No, I watched the highlights this you morning. The highlights, okay. And I saw a couple Twitter clips uh, as well this morning, and two things that popped out were the the Ben kid mm-hmm. and uh, in the in the Hyman penalty kill. I was like, well, well seemed like a good little good event last they night. They tweeted someone who was part of the Oilers media tweeted beforehand and said like, we got a special guest on the ice tonight. Like Ben's fighting cancer. Like you, or, you know, like this is this is a big deal to him. So make sure Rogers uh, or Rogers place you cheer extra loud. Nice. And uh, like Ryan Whitney, obviously from Spitting Chicklets, he tweeted. He was like, he was like, make it a loud one tonight, Oilers fans. Like, wish I could be there. Like, so it was kind of a big deal. Like they they uh, they made it a big deal for this kid, which was awesome to see. And then I got to watch the pregame and them them kind of put him on the spotlight, and that was great to see. And then obviously, big Oilers W after choking against the Stars. Oh man, yeah, I've been like I've been liking it. And the Vander Kane man. Oh. Is he delivering? Oh my God! Dude, he has seven goals in the last seven games. The guy is an absolute stud on McDavid's wing. It's uh, I think this will probably be our only year with him though. So, gotta make it count. Boys, gotta win a playoff series this year. I know Leafs fans can agree with me. Are they in a now playoff? Now or never? They're in a playoff spot. Yeah, they're one point out of second place in the uh, in their division. How many more games left in the season? Like 20? 19. 19? And they have a game in hand on. Actually, I gotta check the Kings won last night because if not, then. We might have jumped them. Oilers might be in second. Calgary's kind of taken away with first place, unfortunately. And uh, but you know we don't worry about them. We worry about the Oilers getting in and getting a Calgary's playoff. good. Nice. So Chicago beat LA in overtime. <sighs> so that means Oilers are two points back with a game in hand on LA for second. So man, I miss playoffs with fans in the rink. It's been what two years? Last pl- or no? No, they did it last year. No, but not in Canadian market. Canada, they, yeah, maybe they didn't. Uh, in yeah, Canada, I don't think they had fans, but in the states, they did. It's gonna be that wild. Was, oh, I, it's gonna be insane. I hate Calgary, but props to the Sea of Red. I know they're gonna show up in. They're gonna show up like crazy for those Calgary home games. Yeah. The Leafs fans, you know, the Leafs fans will be out there for the the start of the series where they win all their games before the downfall, <laughs> and then you know <laughs> you get all the Oilers fans in there just. Praying we can recreate 2017, so our guys don't want to leave. It's gonna be special. <laughs> I hope Baron. I think their Baron didn't play last night for Montreal, but I'm pretty sure they were saying he might play because the Leafs yeah. and Habs play Saturday, and I think they were saying that might be his first game. So that'd be sick to see Justin Baron in the Habs jersey Saturday night, hockey Dude. night in Canada, playing against the Leafs. Talk about like a a dream as a kid growing up in, in Halifax. You're either a fan of Toronto. Montreal, Montreal Boston, Boston, or Edmonton, I guess. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, put, too. Because of, because of Sid. I'd put ahead of Edmonton. But, but like, yeah, it's like those four. Barron, growing up, he was yeah. younger when I don't even know if Sid was in the NHL. So he must, he must be a fan of Montreal. Well, he's. I read an article. He took French immersion growing up, so he was answering the reporter's yeah. questions in French. Talk about putting yourself in a good spot right away, man. Like, Just this guy the, knows what he's doing. Are you friends with him? Like, I know you had both of the brothers on the podcast when I wasn't here. Do no, you know him they uh, so they played hockey like in Timbits with my brother. They're the, my brother and them are the same age group. I don't know as Morgan. My brother and Morgan are the same age group. Justin is a little bit younger. Um, we're we're not like friends, but we grew up in the same community. Like we went to mm-hmm. the same elementary school. So we, we he went to the same high school, junior high, all that stuff. So we just kind of came up and we got the same initials and nice. our lines, all our, our lives. And he's yeah. in the media. He, you came know, on just the, he came on the pod, right? He, yeah, I mean, both. obviously Halifax Moosehead too. So he went yeah. through that whole system. Yeah. Where did Morgan play in junior? He didn't play junior. He went NCAA at uh, Cornell as captain. So he's in Winnipeg now. Yeah. So hopefully those trade. I think both trades worked out for the Baron brothers for sure. They're gonna get it's the Colorado D line. Like it's t- <laughs> that's a tough. That was kind of yeah. It's the best D line I think in the NHL. Well, the, well, that the, was a the, puzzling. The depth. That was a puzzling uh, pick. Well, not puzzling, but it was a bit of an interesting pick when they when they picked Justin in the first place because they had Byram, they had Makar, yeah. they had Devon Taves, they have all these guys on the back end. So you're like, okay, another first round defensive talent. Yeah. A lot of people said it was because it, remember do you remember yeah. when that happened with McKinnon? People were kind of saying, like, you know, yeah. McKinnon likes his guys, and there was, like, a video posted of him saying, like... He said it on the podcast. Yeah, he said McKinnon it on the pod. Out. 
So um, but that no, I think definitely it played out. a hand. But then it worked out, man. Now he's playing for the Habs. He's got the French. He's probably going to see a lot more NHL action. Well, he's close to home, too. Like his parents. Yeah. The flight to Montreal from here is what, an hour, hour and a half? Everything happens for a reason, man. And these guys, I think, uh, like you said, I think they're in a good spot now. I'm, I'm excited to see, especially Justin Barron, because I watched him a lot on the Mooseheads and came on the show. and Stud. Good guy, stud. I just love that move, man. Speaking French, if you, if you got it, you got it. Like, you know those, the Habs media just ate that up. A hundred percent. He knew what he was doing. It's Justin Barron. But yeah. All right. Uh, how much time? We're good? Yeah, I think we're good, man. All right, everyone. Minutes. Uh, 57? Jesus. <laughs> um, you know, everyone, thank you very much for, for listening to the High Button Podcast. We do truly appreciate it. We do this for you. If it wasn't for you, none of us have jobs. None of us are able to put food in our mouths. None of us are able to have a roof over our heads. So, you know, just thank you. You know, I, I maybe it gets old, us thanking you, but I hope not because, it, you know, this is this is our life here. This is our livelihood. And all we do is, is, is aim to entertain you. Um, do me a quick favor, head on over to the iTunes app, leave us a comment, five star rating, four star. If you want to leave a three star, go for it. But <laughs> I don't think it's a three star podcast. I think it's a five star podcast. But anyways, head on over to iTunes, uh iTunes there, leave, leave a little comment for us. We would appreciate that. You guys, you girls, you everyone listening, you guys are the best. Girls, guys and girls, you guys are the best. Appreciate it. We're gonna see you up in Wolfville. If you see Jeff out in Brooklyn at the high school girls tournament, say hello to him. He'll be right underneath the uh, high button sports flags. Give him a little wink, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I might need some support when I'm heading into Game Five on my own. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm, if I get a nod from a high button fan. Get him that'll, a. That'll get me through. Someone get him a. Do you drink coffee yet? No. <laughs> no, no man, no. man, you gotta drink. Well, maybe get him a, a tea from Tim Hortons yeah. or something to get him a little warm drink. Uh, that's all I got to say. Enjoy the weekend. It's Friday. Holy smokes. Have fun. Work hard. Have a couple beer. Put your feet up. Watch some hockey. That's it. All right. We're out. Peace.